Now, get ready for an absolute treat. Your next speaker is potentially one of the youngest people in the room, but a true pioneer, one of the biggest bosses here. He was the first human in history to, to use AI to hire a social media agent to train this Siri-like AI to run the social media campaign for him. And as a result of that, the man manifested 100,000 followers in 22 days. From there, he was hired by Facebook, Meta, and other giant behemoths to train their staff on AI and how to use it. He's only 26. He's known as Mr. Grateful, and he's going to teach you today how to do next-gen content using AI to scale up quicker. He's not a businessman. He's a businessman. Give it up for Dominic Ashford, Mr. Grateful. Where are you, brother? How are all of you doing today? Good energy in here? <laughs> Is it good energy? Y'all learning some good stuff? Yeah? Okay, cool, cool. I really love seeing all of your faces in person today. I've been like behind a screen for the past few months, so being out here connecting with you is like a huge treat to me, maybe even more than it is to you right now. So without further ado, give me a couple of minutes. I'm just going to set my laptop up to like all these screens and everything so I can share with you all the magic that's going on in here, all right? You know, when uh, I realized recently I moved to New York and I've been building relationships with new people, uh, new friends. And um, I've realized that, you know, I, I kind of started to train myself on how to um, ask good questions and be inquisitive. But when I'm quiet with somebody and I can be in silence with them is actually when I know they're like, they're cool and we can vibe out. So I'm just gonna shut up for a little bit while I do this and we can just hang out in silence for a moment, okay? All right, so the Mind Valley community is very special to me. Um, when I was in Tallinn for Mind Valley University, we did a meditation together at the very beginning. It was the first time I had ever done something like that. And really, Mind Valley people are the only people that I actually have the courage to do something like that with. Usually, I'm around a lot of business and tech people, and I would completely lose them the second that I tried to do that. But they were pretty receptive of it. Would you guys be okay to like start this out with a little bit of gratitude? Is that cool? Okay. I, I already pre-recorded this like guided gratitude thing for us. It's like two minutes, all right? Sound? This is a meditation, but there's no close your eyes. So let's just be where our feet are. All right, all right. I'm going to restart. This is a meditation, but there's no need to close your eyes. So let's just be where our feet are right now. Wherever your mind may have been leading you before this video came on, just let it go. Arrive here where your feet are without looking at them. Notice where your feet are right now. Notice where they are in space. Notice that tingling sensation. Notice the temperature of them. Notice the pressure of them on the ground. Notice how it is also happening all through your body. Just take a scan from your feet all the way up to your legs, to your hips your back, your shoulders, your arms, through your fingers, and your head. Notice the weight of yourself in this seat. Notice your field of vision, and notice how you can see everything around you without looking around. Your whole field of vision is in view, with no real bounds. Notice the sounds. Notice how you can actually feel the energy of the person next to you. Notice how rare this moment is. Notice all the moments that led up to you being right here, right now. To be surrounded by such like-minded people ready to learn, improve themselves. Notice how it feels to be safe. To have your eyesight to watch me right now. To have your ears to listen to me. Just give an internal smile towards yourself. Give an internal smile towards the person to your right. Give an internal smile towards the person to your left. Give a silent thank you to this moment. And from me to you, thank you. I can't wait for Dominic to show you exactly how amazing this moment actually is. Bye for now. Peace.
Do we feel good? Feel connected? All right, cool, cool. Now we can get into some tech stuff. So as the great host mentioned to you, yes, I was the first person to hire AI as my social media agent. Some of you may have already known this. And I grew to 100,000 followers in 22 days after I started using AI. And <laughs> thanks. <laughs> and um, those posts right there that you see, I'm sorry, those posts right there that you see are the ones that did that for me. What I would do is I'd hire, uh, I'd, I'd set up an agent GPT within ChatGPT. I'd make a new thread. I'd ask it to help me out with scripting content. I'd have it write my captions. I'd ask it what I should do when I didn't necessarily know what type of content I should make or how I should deal with a particular scenario. Like I got spammed by a bunch of bots one time. And I didn't know what to do. It told me to just to be authentic and connect with my audience. And it actually turned out to be the best move. I deplatformed everybody and built an email list. But the truth behind all of this and all of the followers was that the schedule of making content like this was <laughs> dramatic. It's uh, very intense to put something like that together within such a short amount of time, even with the help of the artificial intelligence that I had. The schedule was just ridiculous. I think Vision shared a stat yesterday that said... 0.04% of people or four hundredths of a percent of people on social media platforms are creators. The reason is because we know intuitively how difficult this really is. This is what my schedule looks like on a day, even when I'm using agent GPT to build something like, uh, to make a piece of content like the ones that you see on my Instagram page. So I'll wake up in the morning about 5 a.m. I'll start to research new AI tools that came out. I'll do that for about three hours. And at this point, my energy is up. I'm excited, probably had a little workout, got some coffee and I'm feeling good. Then I write down about 10 ideas and I pick one of them that I can go and actually execute. And then I'll write the script, which is really the most difficult part because I'm taking three hours of knowledge that I just learned and packing it into 90 seconds. Figuring out really what's necessary and what's not is one of the hardest problems to solve. And then I'll go set up my lights, get my key light right here, got my backlight, got my rim light, and I'll just sit down. <sighs> then it takes me about 30 minutes just to work up the nerve to say the first word out of my mouth on camera. And then the first word will come out and take one. And I start stuttering. So I'm like, okay, take two. All right, we got this. And then I wasn't looking at the camera for that one. So, okay, I got it. Take three. Is that, it's, it's not recording. Okay, no, hold on, just a minute. Let me, let me fix this. Okay, all right, take four. All right, I've been doing this for a while and now my phone is dead. Let me just go plug this in and get some lunch for a little bit. And that's literally how this would go. It would take me 19 takes to figure out actually what I'm supposed to say on camera. And after I finally get that, I'll send it over to my laptop. I'll get in there, start editing it. Editing will take about two hours. So I gotta figure out what I said right, what I didn't say right, pick out the really good takes, get rid of the 95% that did not work. Then I'll edit out the audio and good luck. Good thing for me that I know how to edit audio and EQ. It's just common knowledge for everybody, right? And then I'll write my own hashtags, my captions, and then finally I'll post it. Look at my feed, maybe you get 100 likes, then you gotta wake up and do it all over again. Does that sound sustainable at all? <laughs> Does it sound like anybody can just do this if they want to? Not at all. People have jobs, they have careers. I put everything on the line for this. I didn't talk to friends, I didn't talk to family, I didn't work out, I wasn't eating right, I wasn't sleeping right. I was ruining basically the rest of my life so that I could succeed on social media because that is what consumed my time from 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. on a good day if I didn't have anything else going on. So what can you do sitting here right now 
When you get up and you go and you want to put everything that you're learning here into action and you don't want to fall into this trap, what are you going to do? What tools can you use to help you do that? Well, I have an idea for you. I have some tools that you can use, but it is a little strange. And I'm taking this to the extremes today. I'm teaching you essentially how to clone yourself using artificial intelligence. And it might sound a little strange to you, and it's going to look very strange to you as well. When I first showed my friends this, they looked at me and they were like, yo, uh, this just changed my perception of reality. What I see on the internet doesn't look the same to me anymore. It's like one of those things that you see that you can never unsee. It's like that. So I'm going to show you, and I'm going to show you how to do it, and then you can choose on your own if this is a path that you want to take. But nonetheless, once I show it to you, you at least know how it works. You at least know what to look for, and you at least know that the technology exists. Because what I'm actually going to show you will be ingrained into every social media platform that you use over the next five years. That's being conservative. So today, I'm going to teach you how to optimize your content process with artificial intelligence. Yeah, we know. We got it. Okay. So what data points actually make up who we are? Let's say you are trying to clone yourself. You're probably thinking in your head right now, okay, cloning me? Cloning is probably just a clickbait word because there's no way you can clone me. Cloning is an identical representation of myself. There's no way that you can actually figure out who I am. And you're right about that. We're not trying to clone you. That is kind of clickbaity, more modeling. We're trying to figure out how to create a model of you using an artificial intelligence, something that speaks like you, sounds like you, not try to replace you, but just help scale you, if that makes sense. So what data points actually make up what that clone is? If I were to take your phone right now, take somebody's phone, hmm, how about you? You're on your phone. If I were to take your phone right now and I wanted to learn more about you through text data, which app would I go to to figure out how to do that or to figure out more about you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like what app has a lot of text data that I could go to just to kind of figure out more about you? Thanks. WhatsApp? Okay, I could go to WhatsApp. Anything else? Notes? Yeah, I could go to your notes. Yeah, Evernote, 100%. Any other apps? Your photos. Your photos? You could go to your photos, actually, and I can show you actually how to do that. Any other ones? Your calendar? Yeah, 100%. What about, like, social media platforms, too? Where you type, where you probably sound most natural? Yeah, yeah, yeah. LinkedIn, 100%. LinkedIn is great because there's a bunch of text. Post on there is typically pretty long. The point is, is that you have a lot of text data that you publicly put out on the internet already. So all of the information about yourself that you think is like private, that makes you unique, you're willingly giving all the time on the internet. I've, made, I've been hired to make clones of people, and all I do is use the data that they already put out in public. And anybody can really do this. So the first piece of data that you can use to make a clone of yourself is your publicly existing data on the internet. Content transcriptions as well. It's technically text data because I can take any video that you've made, put it into a platform and figure out all of the words that you said in there. And video is actually supernatural, so it works very well. I can take your captions, your tweets, your notes, your texts, your emails, your calendar, all of that. So one of the first tools that I use is called Descript. And what I do is I take all of my content and I put it into Descript and it will give me a transcript of all of my content. If you already have content out there, this is one of the first things that I suggest that you do if you want to clone yourself, okay? And I literally just press screen record on my phone and I go through all of my content. 
and I just screen record my entire profile all the way through. And then I put that into Descript and I take all of that text data and turn it into a PDF file, just like that. So now I have everything that I've spoken on the internet through a video in a singular text file, okay? That's the first part. Second part, personality tests. These are things that you can do to figure out more about yourself. This is kind of a self-reflective time. It's actually pretty meditative and therapeutic, honestly. There's three personality tests, uh, like sites that I go to. The first is personalvalue.es. And this actually uses a little bit of AI in the background. So what you do, what you do is it'll give you about 51 different values, okay? And it'll pit them against each other. So what you have to do is you just have to pick one. It'll give you like, you know, love or freedom. And you gotta pick which is more valuable to you. And you'll do this for, I don't know, about 20, 30 minutes. And at the end, it'll give you what your top five values are, what you actually value. And this changes over your life. This isn't a stagnant thing about you. Your values change. But what you can do is you can go in here and figure out what your actual values are. And then at the end, it will give you um, an AI written analysis based on all of your values and it'll create a text document for you explaining what your values are and what they mean to you. I just copy and paste that and I turn that into a PDF file as well. I typically copy and paste it, throw it into Google Docs and then that is where I will save it as a PDF. You can see this is taking a while because it really does when you sit here and you're pitted against like two values that you really think are important to you. It, uh, it it's really challenges you. Okay, so here it is. Here are mine. And what you can do is see what, how it has the text under each one of these. It's taking those, all of that data, and you can go there to ask the AI. You can basically ask it, you know, what does this mean about me and my personality? And that is the information that you then take and turn into a PDF. And I'm going to tell you why you're turning all of these into a PDF in a minute, but just follow along with me, all right? Okay. The second one is 16 personalities. This is very popular. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of this. You just go through, take a quick personality test. It gives you, um, you know, what you are and based on this, these answers. Uh, regardless of how accurate you think this is, What's really cool about ChatGPT as a large language model is that it is designed to find patterns and then take those patterns and weave them into a singular entity, right? So we can take all of this information about you, all of the information from your personality tests, from your texts, from your social media content, find the patterns in them, and then put together a more comprehensive analysis on who you are. If you're into this kind of thing, you can also go on, like, you can get your, uh, your Zodiac chart. Um, you know, I did it just for the, the sake of it. Basically, this is supposed to tell you about yourself based on when you were born and where you were born and, like, what your name is. And then it figures out where the stars were at that particular time. And then it gives you information about yourself. Okay. The third way that we can do this, and we can start to get a little bit more you know, interactive here. The third way that we can do this is we can actually have ChatGPT interview us. And it will ask us the questions that are necessary for it to understand us. So it's like, well, what information do you need, ChatGPT? Well, you can just start to have a conversation with it. And ChatGPT now has conversational AI. Conversational AI allows you to speak back and forth with the artificial intelligence on their app. That's the QR code to download the ChatGPT4 or to download ChatGPT app. The sound is now available for everybody, but I suggest that you definitely use ChatGPT4 whenever you're using ChatGPT. So I'm just going to run it and we're going to see what this is like. Okay. Are you ready? I'm going to interview myself with ChatGPT in front of you. All right. 
So what I do is I just come into ChatGPT, and you're going to find like this little like headphone icon at the bottom. And you just click that, and you start talking, OK? Hey, what's up, ChatGPT? OK, so I need you to ask me one question at a time to figure out what my brand identity is. I'm trying to make content for social media and clone myself, so I need to figure out who I am. And it seems like you would be the best person to ask for that. So ask me one question at a time so that you can figure out who I am and what my brand identity is. We're going to make brand guidelines out of this. Oh, it's connected to my AirPods. No. Our relations or peace building efforts? Was it a speech by a particular individual or perhaps a discussion or interview on the topic of peace? Knowing a bit more can help me provide more relevant information or insights. Okay, just a moment, ChatGPT. I'm going to do this again so I can hear you this time, all right? Can you ask me that first question again? Of course. I asked if you could tell me more about the transcript you mentioned. For instance, what's the subject or who was involved in? Oh, okay. So what just happened there is I was using a thread that already had information in it. So it's trying to use information from that prior thread. What we want to do for this is make a new thread. This is why I love live demos, actually, because you make mistakes and then you figure it out in person. So everybody else isn't going to make the same mistake. Okay. All right. New thread, headphone icon. All right. Hey, ChatGPT. So I need to figure out what my brand identity is and then make brand guidelines based off of that. So I need you to ask me one question at a time so that I can figure out who I am and how I should be speaking on camera based on my personality. Just ask me one question at a time so that you can help me figure this out. Great. Let's start this journey together. What words would you use to describe the core values of your brand? Um, well, health, uh, freedom, creativity, love, and financial stability. However, I like to make content based on the humanistic relationship with technology. Uh, the core values of that is optimism, authenticity, and transparency so that people feel more trustworthy with artificial intelligence. And uh, the other core values... <laughs> Oh no, oh no, oh no. I said it disconnected. The core values that I have with my brand is authenticity, transparency, and optimism, because I want to foster a healthy relationship between technology and human beings so that they can live more fruitful lives. Those are powerful core values. Now, how do you envision these values translating into your on-camera presence and communication style? Well, I would like people to be able to watch my videos and immediately take action because the videos are practical, actionable, and they can understand, um, they can understand more about themselves and about the direction of humanity by understanding the very steps that they need to take to use it responsibly. That's insightful. <laughs> can you describe the tone and style you want to convey in your videos to make them practical, actionable, and understandable? Yeah, you know, I just want to be approachable and I want people to not feel intimidated by it. The tone should be nice and friendly and calm and, uh, and you know, yeah, just approachable. They should feel grateful after they watch my videos. That sounds wonderful. How do you plan to visually represent these qualities in your branding, like in your logo, color scheme, or overall design aesthetic? Good question, actually. Um, I plan to do this with like a talking head video style while I am speaking at the camera. It's going to be pretty minimalist, but I'm going to be wearing nice clothes and probably have like a candle or some incense or something around me. But that's the last question. Now you can take all of this information, run an analysis, and then turn it into a PDF for me. I can summarize your brand identity and guidelines based on our conversation but I'm unable to create PDFs directly. You can easily copy and paste the summary into a document and save it as a PDF. Here's the summary. Brand identity and guidelines. Summary core values. Authenticity, transparency, optimism. Two mission, foster a healthy relationship between technology and humanity. 
Help viewers live more fruitful lives through practical, actionable advice. Three, communication style. Approachable and friendly. Aim to leave viewers feeling enlightened and grateful. Yeah, that's absolutely right. But you can make a PDF. Turn that into a PDF for me, please. Yeah, you hear that? That's a turn it into a PDF. Sometimes you just got to let it know what's up. <laughs> it is a satisfying sound, though. You just kind of vibe out to that for a little bit. I've created a PDF yeah, with a summary of see? your brand identity and guidelines. <laughs> you can download it using the link below. Download brand identity and guidelines summary. Okay, so you see it? That's that's the link right there. Yo, good stuff on the Zoom, my man. That's nice. Yes, yes, we got it. So it's core values, mission, communication style, value style, tone, and approach. All right. So now what we have is we have all of our data from online, everything that we've talked about online. We have our notes. We have things from calendars. We have all that good stuff. Secondly, we also have our personality quizzes, things that we might not even know about ourselves were just revealed through us by the values quiz and the personality quizzes and how the stars aligned when we were born to figure out more about us. Thirdly, we now also have our brand guidelines that ChatGPT helped us to figure out on our own and then condense it into an actual um, PDF file. Okay, so we have all of this data about ourselves now. What do we do with it? So when I was teaching this, I actually was in, um, I was in uh, Estonia uh, a few months ago teaching about Agent GPT. Was anybody there during that time? Was anybody at Estonia for Mind Valley University and saw that? Oh, you were? Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. This is dope then. I got a whole bunch of fresh people. So what I taught there was basically how to create the Agent GPT. But the problem with creating an agent GPT, if you can kind of see on the left hand side how we have like our, our history bars, what you'd have to do is you'd have to just give all of this information that we said and you'd have to put it into text and then just put a whole like long string of text into one thread. And then you'd ask ChatGPT about that and over time it might actually forget information. It might actually forget information about you. <laughs> Scared the hell out of somebody over here. <laughs> it would forget this information about you. So you'd have to kind of remind it. And then if you switched models, it would just die and you'd have to restart all the way over again. It was terrible. It happened to me like three times. But what you can do now based on ChatGPT4's most recent update is they have custom GPTs. And what this means is that you can model your own custom GPT using all of this information that it knows when to source intuitively. You never have to go and remind it of anything. And you can give it custom instructions that it'll follow all the time. So let me show you exactly what I mean here. So within ChatGPT, make sure that you're on ChatGPT4 at the top. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit explore on the left hand side. And when you hit explore, you're going to see this new UI. As of my last update, April 2023, Girl. I don't have the capability to create or modify custom GPT models. <laughs> <laughs> She's listening. That's crazy. Is this me? What's happening? Okay, I'll just chill out a little bit. All right. So what you can do now within these custom GPTs is train it based on all of this information that we gathered and give it custom instructions on how you want it to act and how you want it to generate your content. OK, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go into chat GPT and I'm going to restart this just so I can talk you through it because it is kind of finicky. So we're going to go to chat GPT. Make sure we're using four always. Then we're going to hit explore. And you're going to get into this new um, UI here, this new user interface. And at the very top, you'll see create a GPT. Click on that. And you have this option here where you can actually just type in the bottom and tell it what you want it to do. And intuitively, it'll write its own instructions. But 
I want to write the instructions. I want to make it very specific to what I want it to do. So instead, I'm going to hit configure, and I'm just going to name it Mr. Grateful GPT. It's my clone. And in the description, I'm going to say what the clone is actually supposed to do. And what this clone is supposed to do is it's designed to research content for me. It's designed to script the content for me. And then it is designed to come up with content ideas if I wanted to do that. So that's exactly what I'm going to tell it is the, like, uh, this is the description. This is, this is just what it does. That really doesn't have any effect on how it actually works. It's just for the description so that you know what's going on. And then thirdly, you can go down to the very bottom and hit upload under knowledge base. And that is where we're going to upload all the PDFs that we've been gathering for the past. Okay. Can we add 30 seconds to my time, please? <laughs> okay. So that is where we're going to add all of the PDFs that we've been gathering. And that is the knowledge base. Okay. So what you can do or what the chat GPT can do now is it can reference up to 300 pages of text data from a standard textbook. This has multiplied from about 32,000 tokens to 128,000 tokens in this past month. And 128,000 tokens equates to about like 600,000 words. And that equates to about 300 pages of a standard textbook. So technically, you could put 300 pages of information about yourself in here. Maybe one of you is an author and you've written a book. You can put your entire book into there and ask it questions about that. Or you can put an entire book that, you know, of somebody else's book and ask you questions about it. Now you can start to speak to your data. I heard Amon talking about this earlier. This is a very practical way that you can start to do that. But instead, we're going to start to speak to ourselves in this way. The next thing you're going to do is in your instructions. And the instructions that I'm showing you right now are the instructions that are built for making content on social media. Okay. So you can kind of use this template to adjust it to whatever you're choosing to do in your life. But these are the instructions that I'm using for my content, which one is, and I'm going to read it because it, it might be a little uh, blurred from that distance, but it says, you are the AI clone of myself, Dominic, Mr. Grateful. You are a content creator who writes scripts for practical, actionable, optimistic, and mindful educational short form Instagram video content. That's a mouthful. One, you're going to reference my structure and tone of past content in my transcript PDFs. Okay. So I'm telling it whenever I need you to do a particular thing, go reference the information in my scripts. Reference the information from the PDFs if you need to. Okay. Secondly, is to script a 60 second video script on this research that I deliver to you. Okay, so I can give it some information that I've learned, and then it's going to write a script about that. Three, always start the video script with a straightforward hook. The hook is very important for all of your content. I'm not sure if anybody here has talked about that yet, but the hook is very important. Okay, good. So I've just told it, be straightforward with that. And then also end it with my signature, I'm Dominic, Mr. Grateful, peace thing. Third, fourth is to ask me for a revision or approval. So it's going to stop there and then it's going to ask you, do you want to change anything about this or do you want to continue on? That's an important step. Fifth is write my caption and 10 relevant hashtags. Ask me for revisions again. And then at the very end, after we've done all that, take the final product and write an article with this information. So what we're doing is we're doubling up. I'm going to get videos content and I'm going to get written content that I can put on LinkedIn or on my newsletter or on a blog post. Okay. So we're getting like two birds with one stone here. And this is it in action. So once we've built this, this is exactly what it does. This is live. Well, not really, but I screen recorded it so that you can see it. <laughs> I don't want to have any technical difficulties here, which, you know, you can't really get around, I guess. So I said, Hey, Grateful GPT, what's happening? Google just released their new AI model, Gemini. Did you know about that? They just released a new AI model called Gemini. I guess you're about to learn about it. And please research this and provide me with a content video script in my style. That's all I have to say. It's just in my style. Give me a script. And look at what it does. First, it's going to research the knowledge like I told it to do 
in step one of the instructions. Two, it just visited blog.google. It knew to use its web browsing abilities, go to the blog post where Jim and I was talked about and posted from Google, the source itself. It's going to use that information and then it's going to script a 60 second piece of content in my voice. So then I would use this and I would do something like, Hey everybody, Mr. Grateful. And today we're diving into Google's groundbreaking AI technology. And I would literally just look at my phone, speak this and read off of my transcript here. That is way better, way faster than those three hours in the morning that I was having to research way faster than that hour that I was having to take to generate all these ideas and way faster than the three hours that I was going to have to take to then go in there and take all of the information I learned and turn it into a script that just happened. And you saw it. That was like 30 seconds, a minute, maybe. And this right here, is it then generating the article that I asked it to generate on step seven? Three hours of research, one hour of ideation, and three hours of script writing, all taken away into one minute now that we've cloned ourselves with artificial intelligence. Seven hours of my day, seven hours of my day is now back. That's a job. That's a whole, that's a whole job. Seven hours a day is a career that we just saved by using artificial intelligence in this way. Give it up for ChatGPT. You know what I'm saying? ChatGPT is the go. <laughs> but what about that part? What about, what about all that? Because that is really what frustrated me, to be honest, was sitting in front of the camera and having to record for three hours. Honestly, this one 45 minutes that I'm up here on like with all these cameras and stuff is like, I'm going to need to go meditate and like take a chill pill after this three, two hours on, on, on camera. And then I have to go edit after that. It's like completely unsustainable. It's not cool. So what can we do to replace that part? Is there any way to do that? You already know there is. Why would I say <laughs> yes, we're going to do AI for cloning the self as a video, we can take the exact same script that I just had generated by AI and have myself speak it on camera, kind of just like I'm doing right now. I could probably take this footage and create a clone of myself, just make it look like I'm talking on stage every day. So we're going to do an experiment real quick. All right. So look at these two videos. Okay. And I want you to tell me which one you think is fake. Okay, I'm gonna give you a prompt though. I'm gonna give you a prompt afterwards. We're just gonna watch both of them and then, and then I'll direct you, okay? But let's just watch. There's an idea that artificial intelligence actually makes us more human. I mean, if repetitive, we good? All right, hold on. Making sure the lights are okay. All right. An idea that artificial intelligence actually makes us more human. I mean, if AI is being used to automate repetitive tasks throughout your day, and then with that time you're going and painting or spending it with your kids, is AI then allowing us to be more human? I don't know. It's something to ponder on, at least. All right, here's video two. Hello, I am recording this for Meta. This is my rehearsal for the talk that I'm going to be giving to you during the Creator Innovation Summit. I'm just doing a check and making sure everything sounds good right now. My check, my check. Okay, so they're both a little bit glitchy just because of like airplay and stuff, but okay. If you think video one was generated by AI, stand up, stand up. No, 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 you got to stand up if you think it was video one. Okay. All right. A lot of you, while you're up here, I'm saying get a little bit of stats. <laughs> all right. All right. Y'all can sit down now. Ugh. If you think it was video two, stand up. <laughs> okay. Y'all can, y'all can get a little bit of stats while you're up as well too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there you go. Uh. All right. 
I just wanted y'all to get a little bit of exercise, actually. Both of these are generated by AI. Both of them are artificial intelligence. And I want to show you exactly how I did that. It's with a tool called, yeah, I know. Look at, <laughs> look at number two. It is. I don't know what it is. My anyway, hey, Jen, this is the tool that I'm using to do that, okay? You can screenshot this. Or you can scan the QR code. All right, bet. All right, bet. You got three, two, one. Okay. So remember how I said I had to record basically two hours of myself? I got all these mixed, messed up takes. I was stuttering, and the camera was off, and the phone was off, and it was just a mess. Now, all I have to do is record myself for like two minutes on camera, and I don't even have to be saying the right thing. I can go on there and say whatever I need to say, and I use that as the baseline to then create the clone of myself speaking. Let me show you. This is the exact video that I uploaded into ChatGPT. Uh, no, I'm sorry. This is the exact video that I uploaded into A10. I have this in there. Is that doing too much? That was doing too much. Okay. All I have to do is speak to the camera nice and calmly with a smile on my face for two minutes. Two minutes. Okay, don't do that crunchy face because that's going to be an AI. Just sit here with a soft smile, kind eyes, and just speak to the camera for two minutes. That's all you got to do, Don. Nice and calm, nice and easy. Maybe I could take this as an opportunity to explain how I should be taking the video. So you don't want any obstructions on your face because it's going to be clumps of lips for my facial expressions. So any obstructions on my face, it's, it's going to mess up how it interprets the patterns of my body language. I mean, that's basically what it's doing, right? It's, if you could imagine like the iPhone keyboard with the predictive text, it's kind of doing the same thing, but it's just predicting my facial movements and my body movements to what would be happening if I were saying this particular thing. I mean, I am saying this particular thing right now. This is the real dom. The other part is to close your lips right in between the things that you're saying so that it can start to build a baseline and knows what your resting face is. And my resting face should be like a soft smile. It's trying to be meditative and chill and calm. I guess I'm not trying at all. This is just how I usually am. Not two minutes. This is getting redundant. I don't know what else to say. Okay. So that is the base footage that I used. And if that probably looks familiar, the meditation that we did at the very beginning of this was generated with this tool right here. I did not actually say any of that. This was all generated. That's the only thing that I actually said was the video that I just showed you. Did anybody have an inkling that that was AI in the beginning? Yeah, a little bit, a couple of people. Yeah, yeah, a couple of people. If you're not looking for it, and if Mr. Grateful isn't on stage about to talk to you about AI, you probably might not be looking for it at all. So how do you use this? We can go into Hey Jen. And what you'll do is you'll just go to click free avatar. And that right there is actually the CEO of the company. And that is an AI video of him speaking. And in this, I'll also show you how to, um, I will also show you what the security protocol for this is as well so that nobody else is making clones of you. So um, once my past self decides to click get started, we'll get started. Okay, former Dom, click the button. Here we go. Okay, so 
It'll give you instructions. You can decide if you want to watch a video about it or if you want to read it. Basically, what it's saying is, is that you need to upload at least two minutes of footage. It needs to be high resolution, well lit. You need to be looking into the camera and you need to pause between your sentences with your mouth closed, like I was saying, and just use generic gestures so that it can start to mimic like that natural body language that you have. Okay. Upload that for footage. The video that I just took, that's the one. Check all these boxes. Face is cool. You're looking into the camera. You're pausing and the environment's well lit. Awesome. Beautiful, beautiful. This is the consent form. So basically what you have to do is you have to allow it, the camera on your laptop to work. And you are just going to speak into the camera the declaration that it gives you. And it's going to use the same technology that it's using to clone your voice to then use to then make sure that uh, it's going to identify your face and match it with the face of the video that you uploaded that you're trying to clone. It also does this with your voice. The voice in there, by the way, was artificially generated as well based on the voice data that I was giving it. So my facial movements, my body language and the voice was all cloned. And I was going to do a live demo, but they're like cutting me off because I'm out. So sorry about that. Two slides. This is where the future of this is going. Okay. What I just showed you is just the beginning. This right here is where it's going. All right. Where you no longer even need to take a video. These are reference images. This is a company um, that is out of China and they have built this tool called Anime Anyone. Um, it's going to be on uh, it's, it's a team within Alibaba, actually. Um, and I think that they're going to be using this for e-commerce and influencer marketing in some way. All you have to do is upload an image. And then you can just record yourself moving, talking in any general way. And it will animate the image to your actual movements. Now, think about this. You could take a picture of yourself from anywhere, anytime in your camera feed, go on there, and then you can record yourself in your pajamas in your crib and you can be moving around doing whatever TikTok dance you want. And really, it looks like you're still on the beach in Turks and Caicos, chilling, vibing out. Right. This is where this is going. Meta also just released their new um, their new facial recognition and 3D um, avatar cloning where it's going to be hyper-realistic, where it doesn't even necessarily need to be an image of you anymore. It can just be a scan of you, and it is hyper-realistic. You literally just take a video of yourself for a bit, and then now you're able to move your face and make talking head videos like this from your avatar. Pretty crazy. But that's all for me today. I really appreciate all your time. Thank you very much. I'm Dominic, Mr. Grateful. Yeah! Beautiful. Give me up for Dominic Ashburn. Thank you for watching. See you again on my next video. Bye.